Now, purification of copper is also pretty interesting. Let us try to uh, run through this idea. Impure copper actually is already about 90% copper. So this means that I will have some minor impurities, things like metals that are more reactive than copper. Examples that we're using here is iron and zinc, and metals that are less reactive than copper. Examples that we have here will be silver and gold. Of course, there can be other metals, but we just use some more reactive metals and less reactive metals as illustration. Of course, it is also possible with some minerals that are not conducting that can be stuck onto the copper. But later, all this will just be collected at the bottom of my enone. We will talk about this along the way. So if I want to get pure copper, setup is this. Again, we just need a very simple electrolytic setup. And most of the information is in the notes, so we can just uh, roughly take note of it. So I have a power source, anode will be my impure copper, cathode is pure copper, your electrolyte will be copper sulfate equals. So this is the setup, very, very simple setup. Usually the story will start from the anode. We will start to talk about the impure copper. And of course, if I consider anode by right, we will have to consider the oxidation for my anion sulfate, which is stable, will not be discharged. I'll have to consider water since this is aqueous. And since my anode is a reactive metal, we also have to consider the oxidation for all the metals that is present in your impure copper, which is basically everything, uh, but we have already listed all of them here. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to consider the oxidation for zinc, iron, copper, everything that is there, because all these metals potentially can undergo oxidation. So how do I decide who is being discharged at the anode? Now involving oxidation, the idea is very simple. The criteria or the rule is the one with the more negative E value will be oxidized. So regardless of the number of species that wants to be oxidized, the criteria is the same. So it's just like a race. Huh? If you have a race, the rule is the fastest person will win. All right? So it doesn't really matter how many participants we have. Two person running the race, the faster person will win. Five persons running the race, the fastest person will win the race. If I have 100 participants or 1,000 participants running the race, the rule is the same. Whoever is fastest will win the race. So the rule is very simple. And again, if I consider oxidation or species that wants to be oxidized at the anode, again, it doesn't really matter how many participants we have. If you have 10 or 20 or 30 species that wants to be oxidized, the rule is still the same. The one with the most negative E0 value will be oxidized first. So what we do is we just rank them. In this case, it's already in the nodes. Your zinc has the most negative E value, so zinc will be oxidized first. So zinc will be oxidized and zinc 2 plus will go into solution. But remember, impure copper is like about 90% copper. So the percentage of zinc is uh, in very small quantity. So very quickly, zinc will be depleted. So once zinc is gone, then the next metal or the next species that will be oxidized is the one with the next most negative E value, which is iron. So iron will be the next most likely oxidized species. Iron will start to be oxidized and iron will go into solution. So turn by turn, uh, the one with the most negative E value oxidized first, zinc depleted, next most negative E no value, the guy will be oxidized. Then you'll be the turn for your iron. So once iron is gone, since it is an impurity present in small quantities, then finally it'll be copper's turn. Now once copper gets oxidized, then more or less it will stay at this stage for a very long period of time because again it is 90% copper. Majority of it is copper and once copper starts to get oxidized, so the rest of the species will not have an opportunity to be oxidized. So as the inode gets smaller and smaller, then all the less reactive metal like silver, gold, and then they'll get just get detached from the inode and just drop down to the bottom and you'll be collected at the bottom of our anode. We call this sludge. Uh. That means together with all the other minerals that are non-conducting and all the less reactive metals, all these guys will drop down to the bottom at the anode. So they'll be removed. Now remember purification of copper, uh, we do have to focus on how the impurities are removed. So when we talk about the process, don't just focus on from the perspective of copper, we also have to link back, okay, so how the less reactive metals are removed, how the more reactive metals are removed. So if I come back to this diagram, I know that for the inode, 
who can swim into the solution? Zinc 2 plus can swim because it is more likely oxidized. Iron 2 plus can also swim in the solution because iron is also more likely oxidized than copper. Then later, copper 2 plus will also start to swim inside solution. Then the other less reactive metals like silver and gold, you just drop down to the bottom here. So your silver will be here in the solid. Then your gold will be here in the solid state and all the other a species that are non-conducting, all this will just drop down to the bottom and we will be able to collect them at the bottom of your anode. So less reactive metals will be here. So it is being removed at the anode. So that's the story or the site at the anode. Now next, how about the cathode? We will talk about this component in a while. Let's focus on the cathode first. How about the cathode? Now, cathodes will attract cations. So what we have is now we have zinc 2 plus swimming in the solution, iron 2 plus will be there, Copper 2 plus of course will be there because the solution electrolyte already contains a pretty high concentration of your copper 2 plus because of your copper sulfate. I have to consider water, reduction of water also. So same thing, let us choose the E value involving all these guys and we rank them accordingly. Now involving cathode, who will be reduced? The one with the most positive E value will be reduced. Now again, the idea is regardless of the number of species that wants to undergo reduction, more po most positive guy, most likely reduce. So this one is involving copper. Copper 2 plus, most positive E value. So copper will undergo reduction and it will be deposited onto the cathode, which is a pure copper. And since in the solution, I have a relatively high concentration of copper 2 plus because of copper sulfate. So there's no opportunity for the rest of the metals to be discharged. So zinc 2 plus will remain in solution. Iron 2 plus will also remain in solution. That means the more reactive metals, they will remain in solution as cation. Only copper, only copper can go into the solution and it can exit the solution, get deposited at the cathode as copper. Zinc and iron, they can go into solution, but they'll remain in solution. They cannot get out of the solution. The less reactive metal, they cannot even swim, huh? they just drop down to the bottom. So this is how we remove both more reactive metals as well as less reactive metals in one process. So which is pretty interesting, involving purification of copper because we only use one process to remove both more reactive as well as less reactive metals.